everyone and welcome my name is Rotonda Tomori self-proclaimed Mukororo Wavenda thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video and I really hope that you guys enjoy it so before I get started I'd like to set out a disclaimer and say that this case has a lot of like extreme violence and really brutal topics so if you feel like it's gonna be a bit too much for you guys like please just You'll watch the next one or watch the ones before, but anyway, now that that's passed, let's get right into it. So today's case, I actually want to talk about um, someone who is notoriously known as the Limpopo serial killer, and his name is Mukosi Freddy Muraudzi. Freddy was born in 1962 in Mandara village, which is close to Toyando. He grew up with a single mother. His father was pretty absent throughout his childhood and they actually grew up pretty poor. And this time, actually, during this time around the 1960s and so in South Africa, a lot of us know what was going on then. But it was a very difficult time for black people. So poverty was huge at this time. It was like, a normal thing like growing up in poverty during this time was normal and this was actually one of the reasons why he didn't complete school during this time around like south africa it was very difficult for black children to actually like go to school and prosper and actually like succeed in life it was kind of blocked you know they pretty much blocked all those tunnels so not a lot is known about his childhood except for the fact that he did grow up with his mother and his father wasn't present and then we just skip all the way to when his crimes actually began in 1995 he was actually arrested for petty theft during the time and he was convicted and sentenced to four months in prison and i guess this was just him removing his training wheels because five years just five years after this conviction and arrest and probably being released he was back in court for 20 counts of different crimes now including two counts of murder not so much is known about these 20 counts and the murders that were committed during this time but what we do know is that he was robbing people's homes and then during Two of these robberies, he happened to actually murder two innocent bystanders. And yes, indeed, he was actually arrested for these crimes and he was sentenced to two life sentences for the murder of these two innocent people. He was sent to the prison of Bavarian Sport in Pretoria to serve his time. And this was in 1991. After serving just five years of his prison sentence, he actually escaped from Bavarian Sport Prison in Pretoria. And he was now on the run. And even though he, there were like search parties and everything pretty much procedure of what happens when a criminal escapes from prison, he was able to go unnoticed. And for eight years, they actually had no idea where he was. And he just disappeared into thin air after escaping from this prison. So then he finally resurfaced in 2004. He reappeared back in his home village in Limpopo. And it seemed like he just like, he probably thought, you know what, it's been eight years. I doubt they're still looking for me. So I'm just gonna go back home. As he was here, he was actually able to go on with life as normal. And he even got married to a woman by the name of Dakarani. And they had a child together. Now, after this happened, we have no idea if he just went from hiding and then getting married and then and then being a dad to then deciding that, no, you know what? I want to go back to my old ways and I want to do what I need to do. But not to get me wrong, he was probably committing crimes while he was hiding for these eight years because he escaped prison with nothing. So... There is no other way that he was probably able to sustain himself and be alive for that eight years without committing crimes because it's not like he can just go to any place and ask for a job because, I mean, he's a convicted villain on the run. 
So after all of this in 2004, in June, this was when he just decided to go back to his old ways and then his rampage began. So in June of 2004, he actually broke into one of the homes around his area and he just stole a few items and then he left the home. And then shortly after that, he broke into another home and actually attempted to murder a woman by the name of Margaret. Three months after this attempted murder, he broke into yet again another home. But luckily, no one was home at the time, so he just stole a few items and then he went about his way. So in the same month, he actually committed his first recorded assault to a woman. And after this assault, he actually attempted to murder this woman and her sisters. In November of 2004, he actually broke into yet another property and attempted to murder the owner of the home. And then he just went quiet for six months. We're beginning to wonder if this is like him like hiding and then he builds up all this aggression and... All these things that cause him to be the person that he is and then he just explodes and then goes on a rampage and then commits a bunch of crimes and then goes into hiding again and builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up and then escapes and does all these things again. After his six month hiatus, he actually came back in June of 2005 where he broke into the home of Janet and Marvel Dama. And he actually murdered both victims and robbed their property. In the same month, just two days later, he assaulted and attempted to kill an unknown victim. And then just a couple hours after doing that, on the same day, he attacked a police officer stealing his police-issued weapon. To this day, this weapon hasn't been recovered. And obviously, he's not going to say, oh, I put it here. Not long after this, on the 20th of August, he actually broke into the home of Maria and Dakaro Munyai, where he proceeded to murder Maria, and then he attempted to murder Dakaro, but was unsuccessful. And then for almost a year, exactly, he just went silent and disappeared, where he was not tied to any more murders or crimes of any sort. We don't know if valid like he wasn't committing any crimes or if he just no one knew that it was him committing these crimes because he had a habit or this was his thing of actually committing these crimes at night where there would obviously be less eyewitnesses to see that it's him actually doing these things because it's night time and then on the 4th of august of 2006 he returned and this was actually one of the worst crimes he had committed till this point. This was when he broke into the home of a single mother by the name of Poppy Tracy Razzirani. Poppy was actually at home with her two children when Fred broke in and he actually murdered her by stabbing her multiple times with a sharp object that he found in her home and before leaving he decided to trap the children in the house and then setting it on fire and burning them alive and this took place in Chadza village two weeks later with no remorse obviously he broke into the home of the Chilimandela family this was where he broke in and assaulted 19 year old Winnet in the war and also murdered her three younger cousins in the house before fleeing with stolen items from the home and then his final crime took place in 2006 in august where he broke into the home of shonisani tinandaba who was heavily pregnant at the time and he actually mutilated her body with removing body parts from her and then fleeing the scene with stolen property as normal and this crime actually when he was arrested and they did say that it was him uh shonisani's son actually came forth and said that he didn't believe that it was freddy who murdered his mother but he believed that it was his father and he also took body parts from her to actually perform rituals 
But police during this investigation, because they did actually arrest the father, because that is a very big claim, like they wanted to see if it's true or not. They did arrest the father, but through investigation and DNA evidence, they actually found that the father was not the one who killed Shoni Sani, and the DNA evidence, the same one that they found, actually was what tied Freddy Muraudzi to this crime. And this was actually the last crime that he committed before he was arrested a few days later. So although, even though to this day, he won't admit to the murders and most of his crimes he actually won't admit to, but uh, psychologically, it had been noticed that most of his crimes, like it started out as robberies. But then for some reason, he was fueled with this anger towards women because his victims his target was always the woman and then everyone else who actually lost their lives because of him he considered as collateral damage after attacking his main victim and his aim which was normally a woman eyewitnesses were actually able to identify freddy as the convicted felon who was actually on the run for a decade now at this time and that was how he was actually finally arrested a few days after the murder of Shoni Sani. And actually, when they came to arrest him, they actually found him inside an unused fridge hiding. Imagine. Police actually also arrested his wife and two of his friends for possession of stolen property. Not only did he ever admit to any of the crimes that he committed, which is stupid because there was so much evidence against him, including DNA evidence. And we all know that DNA doesn't lie. But he decided that he was going to cause a lot of drama and chaos in the courtroom while they were going through his trial. First, he threatened to sleep on the floor if his wife and son were not released. And then he went on to claim that police actually bribed him with a hundred thousand rand and phone cards to plead guilty to all the crimes that he was arrested for this time. Which doesn't make sense, honestly, because number one, where are policemen supposed to get a hundred thousand rand just to give to a criminal? Like, it doesn't make any sense because obviously if police were able to get a hundred thousand rand, they were not going to spend it. On a criminal they were gonna spend it on themselves and even if this were true like they wouldn't gain anything from bribing him to plead guilty like literally they wouldn't gain anything it wouldn't benefit them except for the fact that they would like be praised for you know finding this horrible criminal but it's not like they were gonna get money so it's actually highly doubted that what his claims are, are true. So as we remember that Freddie actually escaped from prison the first time. So when he was arrested, he wasn't even going to leave in the first place, whether he pleaded guilty or not, because he was then put back in prison for his first two life sentences that he probably forgot by this time that he actually had to finish serving. And actually every single time that Freddie came back for a court proceeding, there were more crimes that he was found connected to every single time. He was eventually in 2008 convicted and sentenced for 28 counts of criminal activity, including 11 counts of murder. And then he was given 11 life sentences and 200 years for his other crimes. He was 46 years old at this time when he was finally sentenced and thrown in prison probably for the rest of his life and hopefully he will never be able to escape. The judge actually made it that he would serve his first two life sentences and the minute he was eligible for parole is when his 11 life sentences would begin so that he would never be able to be eligible for parole in any way or leave prison. And as of this time, he is still serving time. And that is the case on Mukosi Freddy Muraudzi. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, please comment with a purple heart emoji. And I will comment with my own as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.